I'm Gail C, Director of Teaching and Learning, and this week we have the honour of introducing you to Sherry Parrish, who has come to us from Alabama. And uh, Sherry has been here working with uh, our students and our teachers um, about with math. So Sherry, I'm going to ask you to explain what it is that you've been doing, what the focus has been. This week with the teachers and students, we have been looking at a routine called Number Talks, which is basically an opportunity for students to think about a computation problem and look at it from a lot of different lenses. Uh, we have um, found out this week that there are many ways to get to the correct answer that are efficient and accurate and also allow us to work on flexibility in our thinking. And the students have done a beautiful job uh, articulating their ideas and listening to one another. Part of what we do in a number talk is exchange ideas so that if a, one student thinks about solving a problem in one way and another student has a different perspective, we exchange those different viewpoints and look at what is similar, what is different, so that we can come to a consensus on what makes sense for each of us. That's, that's really wonderful. Um, and I had the pleasure of sitting in and watching you do some of that work with both yes. the students and teachers. Terrific. Carol, can you put that into the context of where we are in our math journey here in uh, ASD in the uh, elementary school? Um, ASD embraced understanding and understanding the conceptual math um, many years ago, probably 10 mm -hmm. years ago. And we've really done a nice job of moving along that road. I think most of our parents are used to it now. But we do know that we need to understand it, not just rote memorize it, because that's something that's easily forgotten. Yet when the kids derive the knowledge or take what they've understood, that they can turn it into their math knowledge, and that's not something they're going to lose. It makes it so that they can get out, work through problems, get stuck in a messy place, and be able to work themselves out of them. Instead of just, I know how to do it this one way, and if I don't do it or I get stuck, then I'm done because I only have the one tool. Um, the math talks themselves, especially about the computational fluency. Um, so we don't want them reverting back to paper pencil all the time. We know that that's one tool that can work, but they should have this, I use this a lot, the tool chest for many different situations. Mm -hmm. So this, this talk, which for the most part we think of as the first part of a lesson, um, it's five to 15 minutes long, it's giving the kids that opportunity again to practice, to solidify what they're doing, but also to experiment with new ideas, listening to the kids, the other ideas, so being exposed. Um, I think we have, we've had teachers using these all along. We now have a better idea of how to use it. I think it's honed the teacher's skills on what we're looking for. Um, but it's also introducing a way of accepting children's explanations that's going to permeate the rest of our day. Um, it's what we've been trying to do when we work on word problems or problem solving or whatever it is. It's that really trusting that the child can figure this out. So really doing a lot of work about students being able to explain their thinking and making it very visible uh, and, and which, as you said, absolutely. having them kind of bounce ideas off each absolutely. other, which is fabulous. Which completely yeah. aligns with our math practice standards, yes. where we're now asking kids to model things, we're asking them to justify and explain mm -hmm. and reason, mm -hmm. not just a right answer. Right. Absolutely. So, Sherry, thank you very much for being My here. Joy. We're very pleased, and it's just thank been a you. wonderful week having you here and thank looking you. at how you modeled for our teachers in their classrooms, which is great, and uh, we thank you very much. Thank you very much. My joy. Thank you. You see, sometimes I might be a little harder, and you have to think a little bit more. Either way is good. Okay, can everybody see okay right here?
convince us or prove how we know it's dirty? What do you think about it? together and then you took those fives and put them together. I'm going to show you how mathematicians sometimes write that. It might be a little different than what you normally see. So the tens together and your ten was from here and here. So you took your fifteen. Sounds like you knew there was a ten and five inside that fifteen. And in this fifteen a ten and five also? did that give you? 22. And your two fives? Did, did anybody else think about it this way? The same way? I'm going to show you a way you can show that. This is something we use sometimes in Alabama. It's me too. I thought about it that way. Did anybody solve it again? So you did a five and a five together, and what did that give you? Okay, I'm going to write that. I may not write it the way that you, your arrow way would be, but I'm listening to what you were saying. So a five and five, and that gave you a ten. And then what did you do? write these two tens right here so we can still talk about it as a 20. So it sounds like you use the 10 and the 5 here and the 10 and the 5. 